Okay, having given everything its first cut, um, I'm now getting ready for a second cut. Now I've got to um, sand it all back down. Remember, whenever you're doing finishing like this, stains and varnishes and such, um, especially stains, to bring the grain up, and especially with paint, makes the grain stick right up. You can't leave it like that and carry on. You've got to get it back to your nice finish, tactile, beautiful finish. Otherwise, you'll take all the top coats back off again to get to that. So you can only put coats on to a beautiful finish. Layer after layer after layer must be beautiful in between each one. Or you'll go back to the stage where they last was beautiful in order to get it that way and take everything back off again. So, as I've done there, nice and lovely, I've got to do with this, which isn't nice and lovely, and with all them. Then I can get a second coat on it and <laughs> leave it to dry and do it all again. Um, but we're going to keep doing that until this, when it's sanded down, is the colour I want it to be, and that is now too light. That is okay, that is too light, but it needs to be sanded down and be okay as well at the same time. So let's just get on with it until we get there. on it already just taking off the uh, dust really that the stain leaves behind all that stuff so. and there we go one down and good to go This time I'm only concerned with the uh, pine and any bits of light on the clay. I'm not concerned with doing the whole pine again. There's no need, it's already blended. Right, well, that's the second coat of stain has um, dried nicely um, and everything's feeling very smooth so the grain hasn't raised much but still a little so I need to take that off before I can start with the varnishing also take away the coarse edges on the colour um, but for that I don't want to attack it with the um, random orbital sander again because that would be too fierce so I'm going to go with just the standard orbital sander and I've got a 400 grit paper in there. Um, but even so, 400 grit initially is still quite sharp for it. And I went very fine. So I'm going to run it over another piece of 400 to take off the edge. And that just now makes it feel quite smooth. Don't want to damage it. It's a real nice touch, that. 
kustbureau. Ah, voilà, je vais prendre de slides. Ja, dan naar de andere zijde. Dan checken we dat piece volgende dus. Okay, that's now ready for the top coat. Um, sand down the rest of them the same way, nothing else to do on. Just get them all sanded down. Then the next, I've got a bit more construction to do because the base needs a plinth. Um, it needs to be raised off the ground. Um, the 100 mil for the skirting board, but also another 10 mil just so that you can see the shape of the skirting board. If I have the skirting board book tight up against it, you'll lose the formation of it really. So. A 110, I'll probably, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, I should run some ply for that. Does, if it's got a, back, a darker backdrop setting, it's in a shadow area, it'll emphasize the shape, so that will look better. So, run a piece of that. Also, I need it for the back as well, um, but I'll set it in 20 mil from the back because of the old existing skirting board that's in the house. Um, that will give me extra strength for everything, solidness, and something to mount the skirting board to. Um, however, when I get on site, I'll probably still have to pack it because this wants to be level. So even though it's cut perfectly straight, the floor might not be. Um, so I'll need to pack it in places. So I won't be attaching the skirting board until I actually get there. But I'll be following it so it's ready to go. So it's nice and quick and easy. Um, <clears throat> last thing, so I'll get it all sanded down and then I can get on with that. Also, I need to run off the vertical pieces for uh, scribing into the wall because they also need staining up before I got to the varnish point. Um, and then the only other thing is I want to make some wedges. That's for the assembly process. Um, when this is sitting in between the two walls, two house walls, it's, there's going to be no, 60 mil at one side, 20, 30 mil at the other side, whatever that is, it's going to allow for a little bit of stacking if I'm not careful. So what I'll do is from the bottom, each horizontal will be pegged with two wedges, tamped together to keep them exact. They'll be glued and left there. As I build it up, they will just be out of sight when it's finished and they will just be left in place. 
Um, also, halfway up the top shelving section, I'll put some shelves in and then I'll put a couple of them in, again, glued and passing into place. Um, and then when they cure, they just stay there. And then the shelves, if they come out, <coughs> there's never going to be any warping of it all because the shelves will keep the inner ones straight and the wedges will stop the outer ones from warping or stacking. Um, so I need to run off a dozen wedges, uh, uh, 30 to know and, and 20 to know, I think I'll do me. Um, so that's what I could do before I can start vanishing. So I'll start now getting on with this plywood, I think. That'll be the best thing. Okay, cutting up the ply, you start off with 110 mil. I need um, a piece to go down the full length doesn't have to be one piece if I haven't got enough because it's longer than a sheet. Um, so that'll be done two pieces. The front wants to be three pieces because of that setback that we've got. We've got a piece for this bit, piece for that bit, piece for that bit. I've got this set to 110. Now the next pieces are the two pieces that are going to be scribed down the sides. Um, one of them is being made bigger now because of this and I have to try to switch so I don't want to pull into it. Um, now it's uh, 40 mil I think it was. We've got here uh, 32 mil. So if we've got a 40 mil it's just going to fit. We don't need it anymore. Why don't want to just fit? Um, as for cutting 25 mil. So we'll be okay, it'll fit in nicely. Um, so 40 mil down one side, 20 mil down the other side. I'm going to give it 40 again and I'll cut it. Okay, then the strips cut. Um, I've got two at 40, two at 50 over, which is probably about 20. And then 25. So, one of them might actually do it. One way it's 20, the other way it's 25. So that might do as the fill it at the other side. That I'll take all just in case. Right, this one wants the switch fitting onto it now here. I'm going to go um, at the standard height. I've made them all the full height of the bookcase. Even though it's not going to go on the floor, it's going to have the skirting board done. Um, and what I'll do is I'll cut the height at the end when I'm ready to do it. This will be fastened at the height that it should be for a switch. I'll align it with the house and cut top and bottom to move it up and down as I want. <coughs> so it'll be where it wants to be. Right, wedges. I want 30 to nothing and I want 20 to nothing. Okay, so there we have it. We've got um, a whole host of wedges here. Some 
Or that. Um, now obviously, the further down I cut, the narrower that wedge becomes. But to put them both together, looking at this point, we can get pretty wide. So whenever we get to the end fillet, we can just shove that in with some glue, tap it to where we want it, and leave it within an hour so it's not going to move. And it's going to be that size piece of wood that fits perfect holding that tight to the wall. Um, now for this, I always look at um, switches in the UK sit at shoulder height. That's the easiest way of working it. We don't have to have anything tax, but there we shoulder height. Which for me, we're talking 140. So we'll say 140, so we're going to go up 140. Center of a switch. Bring in. Okay. That's set the center there. Try to drill first, take off the bulk. Yeah. 